we are ready for the next session. Welcome to the breakout session, time zone support um, in Open UI5. And uh, welcome Sven and Victor, um, who are the speakers um, in the session. So um, Sven Bernhard and Victor Sperling, they are developers in the UI5 team. And my name is Ulrike Fempel. I will moderate the session. I work in the open source program office. You see some stickers on some of the <laughs> chairs, uh, which I brought for you. Um, now the session will be recorded and available afterwards on the um, UI5Con event app or on YouTube, if you want to um, listen to it again or share it with your friends and peers. Um, there will be five to 10 minutes um, for Q&A after the session. Okay. And um, yeah, having said that, um, now displaying a timestamp in a specific time zone seems to be an easy task, but while implementing that feature, a lot of issues had to be solved. Even applications must be changed for certain scenarios. Sounds interesting. So let's see how this is working and uh, handing over to Sven and um, Victor. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Sven Bernhard and with me on stage, uh, Victor Sperling. Thank you, Ulrike, for the introduction. Uh, Victor and me are developers in the UI5 core uh, team, uh, mainly responsible for most of the uh, models, like the JSON model, the OData model, also for the uh, UI5 data types and the formatters. Uh, today in the presentation, we want to show the time zone support in OpenUI5. I will start with uh, some slides and later on Victor will show a small demo. <clears throat> Before I can start um, with the topic, I want to define some uh, terminologies. What are dates, times and timestamps and what we understand with these words and how they are used in our data. And after that, I will show some use cases that we had in mind while we implemented this feature. And then I go to the implementation tasks and what we developed to get these use cases running. After that, uh, Victor will show some demos. And after that, we have ho hopefully some time for questions and answers. <clears throat> dates, times, and timestamps. What do we understand uh, about dates? What is a date? A date is a day within a year. It is independent of any time zone. For example, Sylvester 2022 is on the 31st of December 2022. It doesn't matter in which time zone I am in, or my birthday is always at the same day, um, but it doesn't matter if I am in Sydney or in um, New York. A time um, is a specific hour, minute, second, millisecond within a day. It is also independent of any time zone. For example, all shops of a brand open at nine o'clock or I wake up every morning at, uh, at 6 a.m. The only thing where time zones are relevant are timestamps. That is a point in time that can be displayed or edited in a specific time zone. For example, if I schedule a meeting, then the 28th of November 2022, 2 p.m. Honolulu time is the same point in time at, as the 29th of November. Uh, 11 o'clock in the morning in Australia, Canberra. So for dates and times, the time zone is independent. Uh, they are time zone independent. Time zone doesn't play any role. Only timestamps are time zone related. And how they are <coughs> handled in the OData models. As you can see, the OData v4 model um, transports and stores the values as ISO strings. That means a uh, EDM date, for example, is stored uh, in the four-digit year minus two-digit month minus uh, two-digit uh, day. So there's no time zone information in. The same is true for times and only the time, uh, the date time offset, which is used for timestamps, um, contains a date part, a time part, and a time zone information. <clears throat> for data v2, it's a little bit more complicated. The values are still transported as strings, but uh, the representation in the model is uh, an object. That means for ADM date time or date time offset, we have a JavaScript date uh, 
as model representation. And both, um, yeah, the, the, they are stored in the same way, but have to be interpreted in a different way. For example, if you have a date time with display format date, which represents a, a date in our terminology, um, for such an object, you have to use the UTC getters to get the expected day, month, and year. And if you have a timestamp, then you're using EDM date time offset. And you have, again, a date object. But then you can use the local getters to get the day in the current location. So this makes the situation a little bit more difficult. Uh, and later on, um, when we come to the issues, um, I will tell you more about that. So these are the basics. And let's come to the use cases. The first use case that we had in mind was, as a user, I want to see a timestamp in a given time zone. For example, if I schedule a meeting, um, I want to see the timestamp in my location. And if I invite people from other locations, I maybe want to see the timestamp also in their location, for example, to see whether it fits in its working hours or not. Another example could be a flight booking system. I want to see the starting and landing timestamps in the specific time zone of the airport. So for example, in Frankfurt, the flight starts at 11.30 today, uh, and it will land at 2.55 in Helsinki time zone, in the first example on the screenshot. This was the first use case. And the second use case was, as a user, I want to see all timestamps in my configured time zone. Um, this time zone can be the operating system's time zone. So I want to see all my production chain. Um, yeah, I want to monitor our plane, the production chain, uh, and I want to see all timestamps in my time zone. But even if I'm on a business trip, for example, if I go to New York and my home location is here in Waldorf, then I usually uh, change the, um, the time zone of my operating system. Because if I'm in New York, I have to see uh, noon is at, I don't know the time. Um, or if I want to schedule meetings on their time zone, um, then I change my operating system's time zone. But if I want to continue monitoring my production chain or to uh, work on my business um, uh, applications, uh, which are mainly located in Germany, then I want to change my um, my time uh, my time zone of the uh, application um, to the German time zone, for example. So I can have two different time zones, one for the operating system and one for the uh, applications I want to run. <clears throat> so let's come to the implementation task. The first use case was quite, impl uh, quite simple to implement. Um, the timestamps in a given time zone um, have to be displayed. So what we did, what did we do? Uh, first, we um, extracted the localized time zone names from the CLDR to get uh, human readable information, uh, human human readable representation of the time zone ID. And after that, we could uh, use this information in the date formatter, and we created a new. Uh, date time with time zone instance in the uh, ZAP UI core format date format. With this format, we could render um, a JavaScript date together with a time zone ID uh, as a, yeah, a timestamp in the corresponding time zone. And vice versa, we could also pass this stuff. There are some uh, additional format options to show and hide uh, certain parts of this time zone or this timestamp with time zone, but let's see it later when the, in the demo. And to use this formatter also in data bindings, we introduced the date time with time zone uh, uh, type. And this is a composite type, which expects as first part uh, the timestamp, a JavaScript date, um, or in OData v4, the corresponding string. And um, the second part is um, uh, is the time zone ID. And 
uh, later on the smart field uh, added some annotations, the common time zone and the common is time zone. With the common is time zone, I can mark a, a property uh, that contains uh, the Diana time zone ID. And with the other uh, annotation, the time zone annotation, I can combine a timestamp with the corresponding time zone ID. So I can uh, annotate this timestamp with this time zone annotation, which references then the property in which the time zone ID is contained. <clears throat> okay, after that, um, with that information, we could solve the use case one. So it was quite easy. The second use case was a little bit more complicated. We started with the configuration. So first of all, we had to provide a, a way to configure a user time zone. And we did this via URL parameter SAP minus time zone, which expects an Indiana time zone ID, or we provided an API at the configuration set time zone. <clears throat> but take care, don't use this API at runtime in your code because it affects all applications running in the same instance. And if you want to have it only in your application, it disturbs also other applications. So it's mainly meant for shells to do it at the beginning um, and then always use the same time zone. And uh, this configuration is then used by the Fiori launch page settings uh, if it is activated in the system. <clears throat> So now we have this configured time zone and we want to use it. So we enhanced the uh, date format class in a way that it uses this configured time zone whenever um, a timestamp has to be rendered and no explicit time zone is given. But unfortunately, um, this activation of this feature broke some applications, um, especially if the time zone of the operating system was different to the time zone that the user configured. And the symptom was that the days, the dates have been off by one. So for example, you saw on the screen the 31st December 2022 instead of 1st January, which you, is, which you expected. So we had to deactivate this time zone configuration again to analyze these issues. So while analyzing these issues, we found out a few things that haven't been that optimal, and we asked the applications to, to change these. Um, the first thing was uh, timestamp shifting for EDM date time properties, which are annotated with this display format date. So as I already mentioned, um, the, in the OData model, this date is represented as a JavaScript date object. Uh, where the UTC getters have to be used. But uh, the date controls, for example, the date picker has a property date value, but in this, the date picker expects the value in the local time. So somewhere, someone has to do the transformation from the model representation to the representation that the control understands. And they didn't use the data binding, but they did it programmatically. Yeah, this is already mentioned. Uh, the applications used the date value property of the um, of the controls, um, the object-based property, which expects a date object in the local time zone. <clears throat> and they didn't use uh, the O data types. And uh, the fourth issue that we analyzed was the usage of the local getters and setters and constructor and the get time zone offset of the JavaScript date. Um, we will see later uh, what issues have been. But in general, most of these issues could be solved by using the bindings with the corresponding UI5 data types and uh, using the string-based value property instead uh, of, the value, uh, of the date value property. Um, if the applications did this, then uh, they didn't run into these issues, except the usage of JavaScript date. So what's the, the issue with the JavaScript date? If I have a configured time zone equal to the operating system's time zone, then I can create a date like here on the screen. 
um, if I have more than one uh, argument, then uh, the arguments are expected in the local time zone. So if I call get date, I get six, and get hours, I get eight, because the timestamp is the sixth Schuldai, uh, 2023, at 8.15 a.m. And if I use the date format class and format the date object, um, then I get exactly the expected value. But what happened if we have a configured time zone different to the local time zone? For example, if I'm located, if I configured my time zone to America, Los Angeles, for example, which is uh, GMT minus seven, and operating system time zones is Europe Berlin with GMT plus two, then the same date object has been formatted by our date formatter to July 5th, 11 p.m., 11, 15 p.m., because by default, the configured time zone is used. And so you get a, a different result if you use the APIs or if you have a look at on the UI. And to solve this issue, we introduced the UI5 date. This UI5 date is a subclass of JavaScript date. It behaves like a JavaScript date and considers the configured time zone in all its local APIs. That means if I call your 5 date get instance with these parameters, then these parameters are expected in the configured time zone. And then if I format this state object, I always get the expected result because they are in sync, both use the configured time zone. So our recommendation is, always use the UI5DateGet instance instead of a new date. So with these findings, we decided to create um, some documentation and uh, yeah, we created a page in the demo kit, dates, times, timestamps, and time zones. And we also uh, took part at the UI5US Live um, number 24, and we yeah, explained what we found out. So after that, uh, we had to consume our stuff by ourselves. So first, we, we used the UR5 date instead of the JavaScript date in all our framework classes where it was relevant. Then we enhanced the controls or fixed the controls that they are also using the UR5 date, for example, the date picker or the time picker or whatever. And they all use UR5 date instance in their implementation. And uh, in their APIs. So that means if one of these controls return a date object, then they return a date object which has been created with CR5 date get instance so that you can use the local getters, get hours, get a date uh, to get the corresponding value that you see also on the screen. <clears throat> and the date picker has some additional properties, show time zone and time zone. We also rolled out these best practices to the application teams and most of the applications have been already adjusted. And uh, with 1.114, this uh, configuration has been reactivated, so you can use it uh, yeah, from then on. Also, the Fiori Launchpad allows now setting the user time zone if the backend is correspondingly configured. So what have been the lessons learned? Using a configured time zone, uh, which is different to the operating system's time zone, may break applications, especially if they are using nat JavaScript native dates. So before you use it, test your applications, especially with uh, some time zones like Pacific Kiritimati or Pacific Honolulu, because they are at the left and right side of the uh, time uh, zone borders. Um, and then you can see whether your application is in principle working with that. Uh, different time zones. And what we recommend, use the template-based applications whenever possible, because then you automatically get the corresponding bindings and uh, the framework takes care that the visualization and the data are, uh, are handled correctly. If you can't do that, we recommend to use data binding with the corresponding uh, open UI 5 data types. Even if you are using a JSON model, then they are working as well and use the string-based control properties for dates, times, and timestamps. And 
one of the most important things is to replace the date occurrences with a UI5 date get instance. And then your applications are prepared uh, to be executed in, in landscapes where your operating system time zone is different to the configured time zone. And that's my part of the presentation. And I hand over to Victor for the demo. Thank you very much. Oh. Hello, everyone. I also warm welcome from my side. I have the pleasure to showcase the demos to you. Um, we have prepared two demos uh, to showcase the usage of the configured time zone feature in OpenUI 5. The first one is a metadata-based Fiori Elements application to give reference to the first application after the keynote, if you've seen it. And the second one is a handmade demo where we showcase how the configured time zone is used by the database controls like date pickers, time pickers, and so on. So let's start with the, this flight application. It's a fairly simple scenario. We have like a, a report list with some elements in it. And you see here flight data, these are flights. And if you click on it, you see a detail page and you see the uh, date relevant information regarding a flight, in this case, flight 1412. You see uh, the, the, the first date related information is when this entry was created. You see a departure date or timestamp. Let's use the right terminology when introduced. So we have a timestamp when this entry was created. We have a departure timestamp when this uh, flight will take off and when it will arrive also as a timestamp in Helsinki in this case. Uh, we have the opening hours of the departure airport and the arriving airport. And we also have information about the pilot called Max and here his birthday is on the 23rd. And to make this thing right, a little bit more interactive, if I now would switch the time zone, we are currently located in Euro, Europe Berlin time zone. If I switch the time zone, what's your assumption after what you've learned from Sven's part of the presentation, which times, timestamps and dates would be affected by the time zone change in this view? What do you think? you get a star <laughs> exactly only the first so here we we are located i put this into split screen like this on windows okay exactly so if we put this in the split screen here we are located in europe berlin obviously and here we are located in pacific honolulu the exact parameter can be found in the url here you see the URL parameters when also introduced, where we are setting the configuring the time zone to Pacific Honolulu. And you see the timestamp for the created is affected because uh, the time in Honolulu is different, obviously. And the other two timestamps present in this view, the departure timestamp and the arrival timestamp, are staying the same. And it makes totally sense uh, because the airport is fixed located in this time zone. And we have configured a time zone information for this time zone. And I would like to show you how exactly it was done. Sven uh, foreshadowed uh, these two annotations and the two affected en entities are the flight entity and the airport entity. In here, Excuse me, um, for some reason I cannot access the... I go via this schema. Is there a reason why we uh, I cannot access the uh, annotation information? Yeah. Ah, this this way. Okay, my bad. Exactly. So here, here you can see the properties of the entity airport, and we have a property called time zone, which is annotated with this common is time zone annotation when introduced. 
Okay, this annotation says this here in this property, the time zone information is stored. And when we do the same with flights, we see the departure property is annotated with the time uh, with the time zone annotation and with a reference through the navigation property to the time zone of the referenced airport. And via that, we are able to attach the time zone information to this timestamp and make it immune to any uh, effects when configuring time zones. So this is how UI5 is able to handle time zone configuration when it comes to data binding through the types. But what about the date-related controls? Here we have prepared the second demo where you can see um, a couple of different kinds of date-related controls like a date picker, time picker, date time picker. And here below you see an input field with a timestamp and time zone information. We are familiar with that already. And same question goes out to you. I open this one here again real quick. So if I would change the time zone here now, what do you think? Which properties would be affected or which values would be affected? A date, a time, a timestamp, also a timestamp with the time zone information. Okay, I, I don't, I don't want to keep you struggling. Of course, it will be the timestamp again, but that won't be the complete answer to the question because I put this in the split screen again. Here we are located again in Pacific Honolulu. You see the timestamps are different. Here we have 11 p.m. Uh, on the 5th of July. Here we have the 6th of July, 11 a.m. in Germany. Okay, and the date and time stay the same, obviously. But the controls are able to handle configuring time zone as well. For instance, the date picker has a property called today. This today is marked with this purple circle around the corresponding day. As you can see in Germany, today is the sixth. What happens if I open it here? Oh, look at that. The fifth, suddenly. Same goes for the time picker. If I hear you have this uh, nice feature when you press on now, the time picker automatically selects the current time in your time zone. What happens with the time when I click here on now? Oh, look at that. 11 a.m., 11 p.m. Ah, sorry, the other way around. 11 a.m., 11 p.m. Exactly. And like we've seen before in the uh, flights example, this timestamp is completely unaffected by the, by the time zone change because it has its own time zone defined. And the interesting part here is how we achieved it. Here in this demo, we achieved it through uh, the annotations in the metadata. But how did we achieve it here? Through a composite binding, which is basically done under the hood via the metadata annotations. But if you want to do it manually, this would be a possible example. Okay, you have, you have two parts in this composite binding. One is the date part and one is the date uh, information. And you can see here again, you have to use the corresponding, or it is recommended to use the corresponding or data type, in this case, date time of time zone. Of course, below you can also see the model values when talked about, the, uh, how the model, model values are stored are different in the model. In case of OData v2, it's obviously a JavaScript date. And in case of OData v4, it's an ISO string-based date. These are the, I dare say, rather simpler controls, but what about the more complex date, rela complex related uh, date controls? For example, like a date range selection or a dynamic date range or a relative parsing date. How are they able to handle configured time zones? And my answer, my short answer is yes, it can. Here again, you see that today is handled by the date range selection as it is here as well. When it comes to rel relative parsing of dates, for instance, uh, in two days, in my current uh, time zone, Germany, in two days will be the eighth. And here in Honolulu, will be the seventh. 
And about the date range, this is a special, very powerful control. You are capable of selecting date ranges here. You are capable of handling uh, single dates and so on. The specialty about it here is that you cannot use the regular data binding here. To bind values from the model, you have to do it programmatically. And it's here, I enhance this view for you a little bit. And this is an example how you would do it. When it comes, for example, extracting values and write, uh, or writing values back from the model, which are selected in this control, you will have to do it programmatically via the uh, change event, which is attached to this control. Um, the demos we have displayed here will be, of, of course, uh, provided to you via QR code in the public GitHub repository. With this, I think we are at an end with our presentation, and I think we have time for left for Q and A. Yes, we do have ten minutes. So, um, any questions? Um, can Can you explain a little bit more about the time zones? Because um, most people tend to think time zones are just an offset, uh, but we only support this YANA time zone. So maybe you could explain how YANA time zones work. Mm. What do you mean with uh, how the YANA time zones work? So if you just take the offset, like um, um, CEST is just um, GMT plus two. Mm -hmm. But this stays always the same. But for the YANA time zones, you have a kind of geolocation. You refer to a geolocation, which automatically switches between the uh, GMT plus one uh, or plus exactly. two, depending on the summer or winter time. Exactly. If you use, for example, the YANA time zone Europe Berlin, uh, then it automatically switches between summertime and wintertime, uh, depending on the on the date you are. And also, uh, it considers some historical uh, changes in this time zone information. Um, so with the YANA time zone, it is considered if you only use a offset, a date time offset, um, then uh, it is not considered and you have to do it manually. Thank you. Any other questions? Just want to add something. So if you if you look at the uh, at the ISO strings that Sven had shown in the beginning, then you see this offset. But that's a technical information. Yeah? That's not a time zone information. Yeah? And it's also some very important distinction. And yeah? that's not a time zone. Just wanted to add that. Thanks. Any other questions? Or any other use cases you might have seen? <laughs> well, uh, actually, I've been just uh, looking at an example I've been working on the last uh, last month or whatever. Um, if I have a date range selection control, um, and I get uh, get date value and get second date value, and I want to bind that to uh, my old data model. Um, well, out of the box, I had the problem that the uh, first date. Uh, reach the backend uh, with a one day time shift. It's a, uh, well, I think the date range selection uh, starts with a, a date and a zero, 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 and ends uh, with the uh, second date at uh, 23.59.59. Yes. Okay, what's the best practice? What I did is um, I um, just got the date value, um, created a new JavaScript date, um, from the uh, date get time zone offset uh, times 60 times 1000 uh, to, I don't know, uh, just get like the, the, the correct date to my old data binding. And this is exactly uh, what we sh uh, what we mentioned with yeah. this time zone shifting, right. uh, time stamp shifting. Um, if you would bind the uh, date range selection like this, uh, then the framework takes care of uh, transforming the timestamps into the date. Values. In this case, the only thing I would have done uh, have had to do was uh... you use this uh, use the data types that we provide and bind the control as shown here. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> sure, that makes sense. Thanks. And then you don't need to compute these differences and uh, manipulate some JavaScript data objects. This is also contained in the uh, in the demo kit page. Date, times, and timestamps. Okay. Any further questions or maybe use cases or problems? It's a tricky topic, but it's used in many, I guess, in many applications. Yeah. So the, the general message would be the framework is capable of handling most of the use cases that we have here. <laughs> Uh, if you, you uh, practice our best practices, well, we can't make any promises because we can't promise any use cases we don't know yet. We might not encounter in the future. But if you use the best practices, you'll be mostly fine. So thank you. <laughs> uh, please, yes. <laughs> We're always happy to work on this topic. So thanks for a great demo and presentation. Um... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.